back. To be honest, I walked in, this brother here stole my seat. <laughs> I thought, well, if I can't have my spot, I guess I'll just sit back here. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 tonight. All right, you found your place in Isaiah chapter 40. Look with me in verse 28. The Bible says in verse 28, it says, Hast thou not known... Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Tonight I want to preach for just a few minutes on the source of our strength. The source of our strength. Let's go to the Lord in prayer again tonight. Dear God, we are so thankful, Lord, that we can just be in your house again tonight. God, what a joy it is to be able to meet with your people, God, and open up your word. God, I pray that you just help us through it tonight. Would you teach us something? God, would you speak to hearts and minds like only you can? God, most of all, if there be any here that's lost tonight, Lord, would you put your conviction upon them? God, that they wouldn't leave without making you their Savior, Father. Would you help us tonight? Be with me as I preach for a little bit. God, that you'd use my mouth, God, to accomplish something that only you can do, Lord. We'll thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so talk about the source of our strength tonight. I looked up that word strength in the 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and it means this. It means the quality of bodies by which they sustain the application of force without breaking or yielding. And I got to thinking about that, the definition of what strength is. And you know, strength, it's a measurement of our ability to overcome something. You know, if I had a bar here tonight with weights on it, and I were to lift this bar, what that is when we're measuring my strength to overcome the weight of that bar. Strength tonight is a measurement of our ability to overcome something that's opposing us. And you know, tonight in our lives, we're going to face a lot of opposition. We're going to face a lot of things uh, uh, that, that can weigh us down in our life. We're going to face our flesh. We're going to face sin. We're going to face this world. We're going to face the darkness of this world. We're going to uh, face fear. There's things in our life that are opposing us as Christians that we're going to have to face. And y'all, we're, we're going to need some strength to deal with these things. And in fact, if we don't have strength to overcome these things, we're going to get burdened down and encumbered by these things to the point that we can't even serve Christ in our life. Amen. And you say, well, where, where do we get this strength? Where's this strength come from? To overcome things in our life. And he tells us there in verse uh, 29. The Bible says he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might he increaseth strength. You know we can get that strength from the Lord tonight. And you know I got to thinking too about strength. Strength when you gain strength. It doesn't make things any lighter. <laughs> things don't become lighter. I got thinking about when I was younger. And I bailed hay. We used to do square baling with my grandpa. And we'd go out in the field. And I was so young that I couldn't lift a, I couldn't lift a bale of hay. So they put me on the tractor. I'd be up front and I'd be the one driving down the... I was like five years old sitting on a tractor driving down the, the rows of hay. But eventually, I went from the tractor back to the wagon. And they'd throw the hay up to me and I'd push it in place and... Uh, start stacking them, and then I went from the wagon to the field. And I'd lift up those bales of hay and throw them up on the wagon, then I'd get on the wagon and end up throwing them up in the loft. And you know what was happening was my strength was increasing. I was getting older. The bales of hay never got any lighter. 
They weighed the same they did from the day I started, but my strength was greater, and it gave me the ability to lift them. And you know, when we get strength tonight, that's what's happening in our lives. It doesn't make the things of this life any lighter. You know, uh, uh, our flesh is still going to battle us every single day. Right. Sin is still going to be at the door. Uh, um, this world, we're still going to face hate and persecution. Satan's still going to attack. And you know, the things of this life don't necessarily get any lighter, but he can give us the strength to bear them. Amen. He can give us the strength to lift these heavy things. And you know, God is our source of strength. But there are several things in the Bible he specifically mentions. And that's what I want to look at tonight. I want to look at some places that God tells us through his word that we can draw strength from. And the first one tonight is in Nehemiah chapter 8. In Nehemiah chapter 8 and in verse 10. <coughs> The Bible says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them, for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry. Catch this here. He said, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. He said, The joy of the Lord is your strength. And you know, tonight, through the joy of the Lord... In our lives, we can draw some strength to get through some hard situations. You know, when we've got the joy in, uh, of the Lord in our life, it's amazing what that joy can get you through. You can, it can get a child of God through some hard times in our life. Over in uh, Psalms chapter 144, verse 15, he said, Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. And you know, tonight, if anybody ought to be happy, it ought to be us. Amen. It ought to be the children of God. You know, every single day of my life, I'm blessed. Amen. He daily loadeth us with benefits. <clears throat> right. Listen, we're saved. We're on our way to heaven. If you're saved tonight, you couldn't go to hell if you wanted to. Right. Right. On my worst day, I'm better off than the richest lost person out there in that world. Right. Right. Yeah. God has been good to us. And you know, it, it ought to bring a joy in our life. It ought to give us a, a happiness. Turn over to Acts chapter 16 with me. I want you to see something. Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, in verse 22. The Bible says, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. You know, you look at this situation here in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas, they're thrown in prison. You know, they're beat. They're chained. They're uh, locked up. No doubt they're sore. They're hurting. They're in the dark. And, and, you know, the natural man would look at this situation that they're in and say there is nothing to be happy about. There's nothing to praise about. There's, there's nothing to sing about. But here we find Paul and Silas, the Bible says about midnight, they begin to lift up their voices and sing praises unto the Lord. And you know, the thing is, Paul and Silas had something in their heart that nobody else in that prison had. And that thing was the joy of the Lord right. in their hearts. Yeah. And you know, when you've got that joy of the Lord in your hearts, it can give you a song in the darkest places of your life. It can get you through some things. It can strengthen you. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 16 and verse 11, he said, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You know where fullness of joy is found tonight? Listen, the professionals and the elites of this world, they're going to tell you it's found in success. They're going to tell you it's found in, in fame and riches and wealth and uh, living your own truth out there in this world. 
But where true joy, fullness of joy is found is in the presence of God. Amen. He said in the presence, in, in, in thy presence, he said, is fullness of joy. You know, you take a lost man tonight that's got every single thing that this world says you need to be happy and you put him on his deathbed next to a child of God, you know who's going to have joy and peace? It's going to be that child of God. Yeah. That person that's got the presence of God in their life. You know, when, when everything in this world is stripped away from them, you, you think of a lost man laying on his deathbed. You know, those riches, they're not going to mean anything to him anymore. If he had fame, that's not going to mean a thing to him anymore. When the things of this world are stripped away from them, they've got no hope left. But even in our darkest places, when everything's gone, you know, we still have the presence of God with us. And that can bring the fullness of joy in our life to strengthen us and get us through hard situations. In Habakkuk chapter 3, the prayer of Habakkuk, in chapter 3 and verse 17, he says this. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be on the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Notice what he says. He says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places. Yeah. What he was saying, he said, though everything else is failing, Though everything else is coming to ruin. Though everything else around me is in bad shape. He said, you're still going to find me praising. You're still going to find me joyful. You're still going to find me joying in the God of my salvation. And you know, we can find strength tonight in the joy of the Lord. We can joy in the God of our salvation. He said, the Lord is my strength. And you might look around tonight and you might say, well, things look bad out there. You'd be right. Things in this country, listen, things are in bad shape. Amen. We can look around and, and we can see how bad everything's getting. Things are falling apart. Things are failing. And we can look at it tonight and we can get discouraged. We can get depressed. Listen, or we can rejoice in the God of our salvation. Yeah. Listen, we're, we can do one of two things. And you know, tonight, when we do have that joy, when we get that joy in our life, it can get us through the hard times. We can draw strength through that joy. Turn to Psalms chapter 119. Secondly, tonight we can get joy from the word of the Lord. Psalms chapter 119. <clears throat> Look what he says in verse 28. He said, My soul melteth for heaviness, Strengthen thou me according unto thy word. <clears throat> he said, my soul melteth for heaviness. You know, tonight, there, there's going to be times in our life we face some heavy things. We're going to face some things in our life that gets heavy. You know, we're going to face hardships. We're going to face trials. We're going to face uh, uh, persecution and sickness and financial issues. And, and I mean, you name it tonight. We're going to face some things that get heavy. And, and you know, we do, we, we should always have the joy of the Lord. We can always have the joy of the Lord. There is always something to praise God about. Amen. But if we were truthful tonight, if we were to be honest, listen, I'm flesh and you're flesh. And sometimes we get hit with something in this life and we don't have the joy of the Lord, do we? There's times we get hit with problems, with trials, with tribulations, and because we're flesh, there's times we fail to have the joy that we should have. Right. Uh, he says in um, Psalms chapter 51, verse 12, uh, the psalmist said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. He said, Restore unto me the joy of of thy salvation. Now this was dealing with David's sin. When he had fallen into sin. And he lost the joy of his salvation. But this goes to show us that it's possible. We can lose the joy. Of what God has done for us. Amen. 
We can lose the joy that's supposed to be in our heart. And, and you know, you, you think if we lose that joy that we draw strength from, what do we do then? What happens when we're burdened down? When we've got a heavy load and we don't have the joy to strengthen us. So what do we do then? He said here in verse 28. He said, my soul melteth for heaviness. Strengthen thou me. He said, according unto thy word. Amen. You know, even when we don't have the joy that we ought to have. We can draw strength from the word of God. Amen. When we go to the word of God. Uh, there's times in my life I've been burdened down with things. I've, I've had a heavy load. And I've opened up my Bible and God's begun to show things to me. He's begun to uh, teach me and remind me of some promises. And you know what happens then. After God begins to show me some things, I start feeling that joy again. Yeah. That joy starts building back up inside of me. And, and you know, uh, when we read the word of God, God can renew the joy of our, uh, renew that joy of our salvation. Amen. He can strengthen us through his word. In John chapter 16, verse 33, he told his disciples, he said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. He told his disciples, he said, These things have I spoken unto you. So in other words, he said, when you face those tribulations down the road, he said, these things I've spoken unto you, that when those hard times come, he said, you're going to have peace. And you know, he said, these things that I've spoken unto you, he was telling them they could look back on the things that he had said then to give them peace down the road. And you know, tonight when we face hard times and tribulations, we can look to what God says. Yeah. And it can give us strength to keep on going. In Psalms 119, in verse 49 there, he says, Remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort and my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Well, aren't you glad for the word of God? Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad God has given us his holy word? Amen. Well, this eternal book that we can go to in a time of need, he said, he said, remember the word unto thy servant upon which thou hast caused me to hope. You know, we ought to draw some hope from this book when we read it. It ought to bring that strength. He said, this is my hope. He said, it's my comfort. He said, it hath quickened me. It hath made me alive. You know, we can draw strength from the word of God tonight. He says also from the word of God, we can get strength over sin. He said there in Psalms 119, verse 11, he said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Listen, you want to get victory over sin tonight? The Bible can do it for you. Amen. Through the word of God, he can give us strength to overcome sin in our lives. It can give us strength over fear. He said there in Psalms 119, verse 50, he said, This is my comfort in affliction, talking about the word of God said, it's my comfort and affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. This can give us victory over fear tonight. You know, anybody in their right mind looking at what's going on out there today, anybody in their right mind should probably be afraid. Amen. Hey, you, look at, you look at the shape our country's in. We're on the edge of World War III. Things are going bad. It seems like countries are constantly in conflict. There's so much confusion. You look at uh, uh, the politics of this world and everything that's going on. It's a fearful thing sometimes. But you know as Christians what can uh, uh, help us look at this world and have a complete peace of mind. Listen, it's not who's in the White House. It's not uh, uh, some man in a political position. It's when we look to the Word of God and say, God said he's still in control. Amen. God said he's still got everything. Uh, he's still on the throne. You know, we can look to the word of God and say, this is exactly what he said is going to happen. He's already told us things are going to wax worse and worse. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it shouldn't be a shock to a Christian to look out there and see what's going on. And it gives me a peace of mind tonight and a comfort 
and victory over fear in my life because I can look at this world and say, hey, God has already said this is going to happen. We can get strength over fear through the word of God. It can give us strength over ignorance. He said in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, he said, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Well, I'm thankful tonight that God has shown us a better way. Amen. The only reason any one of us are sitting in church tonight, the only reason we're not out there living in sin, listen, it's not because we're so righteous. It's not because uh, uh, we're above everybody else. It's because God got a hold of us. Amen. We ought to be out there on our way to hell tonight. But because God has shown us a better way, God has given us his word, boy, we can, we can get victory over sin tonight. We can get victory over those things in our life. We can get strength through the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. He said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You know what that means, thoroughly furnished? That means you've got everything that you need. Amen. Through the word of God, he said he has provided us every single thing that we're ever going to need in this life. And that word of God that we hold in our hands tonight, even when we don't have that joy, we can get in the word of God and it can bring that joy back to us. It can bring that strength back to us. So we can get strength through the joy of the Lord. We can get strength through the word of the Lord. And thirdly tonight, we can get strength through the people of the Lord. Amen. He said in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, said, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You know, as the day of Christ gets closer and closer, this world's not going to get any easier. In fact, it's going to get harder and harder. And, and, and he said, uh, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You know, we need to keep exhorting one another. We need to draw strength off of one another. And, and, and you know, what strength we can draw just from the people of God. Right. We can draw strength off of each other. And, and you know, there's, I'll say this, if, if, the, if the doors of the church are open, we ought to be here for each other. Amen. Amen. We ought to be in church. And, and I understand, listen, there is health issues. There's people that's sick. There's My wife's home tonight sick. There's times that we cannot be in the house of God. And I understand that tonight. But if we're able, we ought to be here. Amen. We ought to be in the house of God for each other. And you know, if we're honest tonight, we need church. Amen. As a Christian, we cannot make it without church. Amen. And over in Psalms chapter 122, verse 1, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. You know, there ought to be a joy in our hearts when it's time to go to church. Yeah. You know, I need it tonight. I need it Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. I need God in my life. And I need, I need the Word of God. We just looked at that. We need preaching. We need to sit in Sunday school and, and hear the Word of God te uh, taught. We need the Word of God. But you know, even... <coughs> even uh, uh, Else than that, we need each other tonight. Amen. We need the people of God. You know, this world can feel like a lonely place sometimes for a Christian. If you all are in the workforce, if, if you're out there working, uh, most places we're surrounded by lost people. We're surrounded by people uh, that don't know Christ. And I mean, they act like lost people. That You can't expect them to ask, act any different. They don't know the same God that I know. And, and you know, though sometimes it gets lonely out in the world, boy, it is a comfort to come to the house of God and see the people of God. Right. To be able to uh, worship with uh, uh, other Christians. And you know, I'm so glad and so thankful that we don't got to do this thing alone. And in fact, God ordained the local church so that we wouldn't have to do this thing alone. We can come to the house of God and be with fellow brothers and, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. And you know, we can draw strength from each other. He said over in Ecclesiastes, 
chapter 4. He said in verse 9, he said, Two are better than one because they have a good re reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow, but woe to them that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat, but one. Can, but how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand them. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You know what he's saying? He's saying we ought to help each other. Amen. We ought to stand with each other, uphold one another, comfort one another. Amen. We ought to give strength to each other tonight. Right. We ought to be there for each other. And I got to thinking about um, in my younger days, you know, I'm pretty young, but I had some younger days. I used to do a, a martial arts, and I had a, 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 a personal trainer. We had a workout coach, and I'd go like three times a week, and we'd work out, and we'd have this bench that I'd lay on. It was a sliding bench, and I'd get up on it, and I'd start doing uh, reps of pull-ups. Now, I could do about 25. That's about my max. That's, that's all I could do. And one day I got in there and I got on the table and I, I began to do my reps. And I was going up towards 25 and my arms started getting weak. They started getting shaky. I was about to my point. And my workout coach, he got beside me and he started yelling in my ear and clapping, saying, come on, just give me a few more. And he kept yelling and yelling and he's pounding and saying, just 10 more, just nine more. And you know, before it was over, I ended up doing almost 40. 25 was my max, and he got me to almost 40, just through encouragement. And you know, that's what we ought to be for each other tonight. Amen. That's how we ought to act towards each other. You know, when we're burdened down, when we're heavy, if someone's facing something tonight, we ought to be that shoulder of encouragement to go up and say, hey, I'm praying for you. Just keep pressing on. Right. Just stay faithful. Keep going. We ought to be there for each other, growing strength. And you know, tonight, it's not even, not even just, even if we don't say anything to each other, you know, it's a blessing just to go to church and see each other. Right. Just to know that there's still people around you that are faithful. That there's still people standing on the Word of God. Listen, that there's still a preacher that will get up and preach truth. And, you know, just to look around and say, hey, I'm not in this race alone. We ought to be there for each other tonight. Yeah. And listen, I want to encourage you. If you know somebody going through something, be there for them. Amen. Yeah. Go up to them. You, you don't know what an encouragement it might be, what, uh, what strength it could give somebody just to go up and pat them on the shoulder and say, hey, brother or sister, I'm praying for you tonight. We ought to be there for each other. We can draw strength through the people of God. Right. I'll give you one more tonight. We can draw strength through the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. He says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, he says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his Spirit in the inner man. You know, tonight, the joy of the Lord, it would be empty. The word of the Lord would be empty. <clears throat> Us gathering here tonight would be empty and pointless if it was not backed by a living God. Tonight. Amen. Amen. But because it is backed by a living God, we can get strength through his joy. We can get strength through his word. And, and you know, tonight, that same God that parted the Red Sea, <coughs> that same God through his power and might that took the children of Israel across the, uh, the wilderness and uh, brought down the walls of Jericho. We read all the great things of the God we serve. You know, that is the same God that indwells us tonight. Amen. That is the same God that is living in us. And he said that we would be strengthened with might by his spirit <clears throat> in the inner man. And you know, tonight we can get strength through him. When I'm talking about strength, I'm not talking about our own strength. But we can get strength through our God tonight. Yeah. It's His strength that can enable us to do the things that we cannot do in and of ourselves. And you know, tonight we better make sure that we're relying upon the strength of God and not our own strength. Because our own strength is going to fail every single time. Right. 
What's our strength tonight? What are we relying on? Listen, are, are, is, do we have that joy of the Lord? Are we staying in His Word? If we're not reading the Word of God, He can't strengthen us through it. We can't have that joy that God can give us if we're not even in the Word. We need to make sure we're reading it tonight. Listen, are we doing our part strengthening each other? Are we there for each other? Are we helping each other? Are we exhorting one another? You know, where does our strength lie tonight? That's all I've got. We'll come have a verse of invitation.